PPTs. Okay. So in today's PPT, specifically, we are going to look at In today's PPT, we are going to be looking at parts of speech. And after we finish parts of speech as an introduction, we'll be heading over to prepositions and conjunctions. So in today's class, you'll be getting an overview of what are different parts of speech and what in specific are prepositions and conjunctions. Okay. Now, before we start off, I have a very simple question to ask you all. And, and this has nothing to do with parts of speech. This has something to do with English in itself. Uh, can, can someone tell me why you are learning grammar as a part of your CRT at all? OK, so don't do this when you're leaving your phones on your bed and like, you know, going out to have a smoke or talking around with your friends and all. Let's have a lively conversation. You guys are free to chat. Okay. Please unmute yourself. But I have nothing against you. You can like write down whatever you want on the chat. Okay. So you want to test out your verbal abilities. You want to test out your language abilities to solve verbal ability questions and improve communication. Okay. Fine. So, uh, oh, it's basic. 179 feels that it's basic. All right. So I, I have this one question again. If you if you think it's so basic, what is communication? Like, I mean, I, a lot of people are putting in communication skills, right? So what is communication? If, if I were to just look at it, can you see what's being written on my screen? Can all of you see? Yes, sir. All right. So what does this word communication mean? I mean, what is it a very complex thing? Is it a very simple thing? Like, does it have a lot of meaning? Or is it something that we do on the daily basis? What is this? Okay. So people say, how well do we convey our thoughts to make others understand what we actually mean? All right, fine, fair enough. All of you, you, you guys like are 20 years old, right? You guys have lived for 20 years in, in this uh, life, no? So far, you've spoken to one another. You've communicated with each other. Is there anyone who has not communicated with others till now? You've all communicated with each other, no? Okay. Right. Now, tell me one thing. Till today, did you face any difficulty in communication that today you'll have to come and learn grammar from me? In simple words, if you have a smart lad, you can see that you have a smart lad. No, right? Okay. Thank you. Then why, why, why are we doing this exercise? Why are we uh, spending two hours learning something that we think we already know? Okay. Let's, let's start off with another question. Okay, and this question is going to be a little, little more, uh, you know, comical for you, probably. Oh, it'll be in exams. Venkata Siva Sai Eknad Abhi. Okay, your name is really, really long. It will definitely be in exams, but my whole question is, why should it even come in the exams? See, yeah, for 20 years, Venkat, you've been speaking to someone else, and that person could understand what you're saying, no? Now... Suddenly, tomorrow after going to the company, when you speak to them, it's not like the other person will say, Are, what is this guy saying? No. Let's say that you and me are friends here. Okay, last week we spoke on the phone and whatever you had to tell about that girl in your class, I understood. Now, let us say that we, we join a company and we both are working side by side. If you tell me the same things, it's not going to be like I'm not understanding it now, no? Then why, why is it that we need to get better at what we are doing? Hmm. 1C6. Uh, may, I, may I know your name? Like, is, is it okay if I ask you for your name? 1C6, what do I call you? Because calling you 1C6 is very stupid. It, it sounds like you're a robot. 
Bhagiraj is here. Oh, one C six. You are Bhagiraj. Okay. So because of our foolish educational system. Okay. Do you think this education system is foolish? Also, zero to E one. Yes. Whatever you were saying, you you can also unmute yourself and say. Education system is not foolish, sir. But the people who made it were foolish. Isn't it the same thing? Like, okay, L let me put it this way, okay, sir. That robot does not kill people, sir. But people who made that robot made it like that so that it kills people, sir. That's what you said. That's no, 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 sir. It's quietly. I mean, contrast to the sentence which I had given. Okay, so let us say that because of our foolish educational system. Let me ask you a question: Is our educational system foolish, or are the people who made it foolish? Because of the people, it became foolish. So basically, yeah, that was a mochi. Yeah, that was a chess. Sir, ante na nuche perdi. Ha ha, ante. Ante, okay, perfect. Yeah, that's that's somehow not it. I I do understand educational system is a part to uh, you know. blame but what we don't understand is that we as students have been only in one area in one locality in one city in one state for the last 20 years of our life okay so when you were communicating with other people other people knew what you were going through what your life what your surroundings have been like what your ideas would be okay but when you are going out as in let me say that if you do score a job in bangalore when you go there and you speak to someone maybe from himachal pradesh that person might not be able to understand exactly what you are saying because he is not being with you that is where the entire part of communication comes in okay because when i am with people that i know all right when i am with people that i know i can communicate in whatever way i want for example i'll give you a very very simple example here my dog does not know english okay but when i ask it to sit it will sit it does not know telugu also i am 101% sure about it but if i say kurcha it will sit down okay but does that mean that i'm able to communicate with my dog in a very very nice manner does that mean the same obviously no right just because i'm able to express myself does not mean i'm able to communicate well okay the limits of what i am doing needs to be broken and that is where today's class comes in okay once we understand how simple things are and how logical things are only then can we understand and appreciate the beauty of a language most of us for the better part of our life have been only communicating in our native language am i right or no ipudu daga telugu lone maatladukuntunnam manam yes sir yeah so where is the practice for us to be able to communicate our thoughts effectively in english we don't and and i i'll tell you what by this year end i would have probably taught somewhere around 3000 to 3500 students and most of my students and i have only taught verbal ability and logical reasoning for the better parts of it so most of my students tell me one thing that they are not confident about what they're going to speak and hence they don't speak and i asked them this question okay i i am a psychology uh, student too so i i asked this question okay are you are you not confident about what you speak because you don't know how to speak it or did you not learn how to speak because you're not confident it it's like that question no which came first the chicken or the egg i are, are you getting my drift are you getting where i'm going with this do you understand yes, what sir. yeah so a lot of you might not be entirely sure of what's happening in english you know you may be not sure of what the rules are maybe what all of the rules are at once 
which is why you are not trying to go forward with whatever you are doing or maybe you are adjusting you are adapting to the uh, you know broken english that we already know and <clears throat> right that's what i'm saying we're not sure of what we are speaking is correct or not no and people who are supposed to be correcting you they're also not entirely sure of what they are supposed to tell you okay i'll give you a reason for that a lot of times when someone wants to correct you they are afraid that they might discourage you okay so before i start off my class and delve into the uh, topic as as a whole let me let me firstly tell you that i am on your side of this battle towards your placements when when you're going sitting writing that exam and you're feeling like oh my god this is a fight remember pradi is on your side of the uh, you know seat and if and when i tell you that you are wrong my only intention is to make sure that you improve can you be uh yeah okay all right so that's it is that so yeah i want you to know that if i am providing you any uh, criticism please please do positively because that is for you only all right all right so can any how many uh, letters are there in english anyone 26 okay uh, may know your name sir so you someone who said 26 what what's your name sir uh 1e5 sorry oh, okay all right so 1e5 says 26 anyone else who wants to give me a different answer my question i'm going to repeat again how many letters are there in english letters are sir ha ah, yeah letters nana no, no. So you want to change your answer? Sir, two sir. Seven. Two. Seven sir. Seven sir. Okay. A lot of people are telling me seven. Remember, all seventy seven. No, they should crack IAS. Okay, I'll I'll change the question. By the way, uh, the number of letters are twenty six only. How many alphabets are there in English? One. Huh? One. Seven, sir. Okay. Uh, two fifty four says one and three k two. What do you say? How many are there? Sir. Seven. Sir. Okay. All right. So let me let me clear off the basics right away. Okay. The first things first. English as a language has two parts one is its script okay and the other one is its sound the sound component is what we call as the speech meer maatlaade di script is what we write okay now the name for whatever this script is is nothing but alphabet okay so english alphabet is one which has 26 letters am i right yeah english alphabet consists of 26 letters so we are all clear with this so far it's so good right all of you got this right okay you can say yes no something okay all right all right now yes, sir all right cool so next part i'm going to ask you another question i have maybe a a word with only one letter can i make an entire word with only one letter yes no 
Yes, yes. Wow, okay. Yes, I can. Okay. So, can you give me an example? All those people who are saying yes, can you give me an example? Maybe I is an example as such. A is an example as such. Leela Sai Prasad, S is not an example. Uh, yes, ni, yes, ni, you, bio, you, ni, you, ni, ride and nemo chala pet kordu. Why sorry? It's okay, dude. Chill. All right. Okay. So, I and A are definite example. Ah, uh, 383, Q, U, E, Q. Ma, ask That's not what I'm asking. Actual English words. I and A. Okay. All right. Fine. So, basically, I can write one word just with one letter. Uh, what about what about a sentence? Can I write an entire sentence with just one word? Is that possible? No, sir. One letter, no, sir. Not possible. Not one letter. What about one word? Can I make an entire sentence out of only one word? Hmm. So all the people who are write, typing no, no, you answered my question using only one word. Which I completely understood. That means you made complete sense. Which means it was a sentence. English is a funny language. Okay. English is a very funny language. Now, it's always easy for us to learn languages when we enjoy it. Okay. For the next one and a half hour, Please, please try to enjoy yourselves as much as you can while learning as much as you possibly can. Okay, if, if you need my help anywhere, please, please do pause me. There's no button, this is not a recording. So what you have to do is just raise your hand. Okay, I'll make sure that I, I give every opportunity to each of you to get your doubts clarified. All right, okay. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is what is a subject and what's a predicate. All right. But before that, let me let me get to the point of what is a sentence actually. So what is this sentence? Okay. A sentence is essentially a combination or a meaningful combination of words. Okay, a meaningful combination of words. Can all of you see my screen and what I'm writing on the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, all right. Now, whenever I'm saying a meaningful combination of words, what is it supposed to be? I'm supposed to either talk about something and tell something about it. For example, let me say that I am teaching this class. Okay, just give me one moment, guys. Right, I'm so sorry for that. So yes, uh, as I was saying, when I'm talking about a sentence, a sentence is always a meaningful combination of words. Okay, so let's take a simple example. I am writing on a book. Now, can I call this as a sentence? It's a meaningful combination of words, right? Yes, no. Yes, okay. Now, for me to be able to call this a sentence, I need two things, all right? First thing, what am I talking about? Or maybe, who am I? talking about okay in this sentence 
Who am I talking about? I'm talking about myself. And what am I telling that I'm doing? I am writing on a book. So basically, I am saying that this person, okay, so this person is doing this action. Am I right? So, in a very simple manner, I can very easily say that first part will be who or what we are talking about. And my second part will be what I am telling about them. Are we clear? Now, this first part is what we call as the subject of the sentence. Okay? And the second part is what we call as the predicate of the sentence. Yeah? Let's take a few examples. I, I'll, I'll explain it to you with the help of an example. Okay? Let me say that uh, Michael plays an instrument. All right. Now, in this sentence, Michael plays an instrument. Can I say that the person I am talking about is Michael? And I am telling you something that Michael does. Am I right? So guys, can you see the one in red as a box is our subject, okay? And the one in blue will be our predicate. In English language, predicate means to say. Ante mi reenti cheppina, adi predicate hai ni maniki. Okay na? Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So now, <clears throat> here are a few examples. Yeah. Over here, we walk down the street. Ante we ever manam veela gunch martlarthnam. We are talking about we, no? Manam andram veela gunch martlarthnam. So these people become the subject. Okay? Whatever we are telling about these people become, becomes our object. Okay? Yeah. So the next part is, if we look at this example, over here the town built a new jail. So this part, the town becomes our subject. Why? Because this person or this thing is doing the action. If I ask you the question, who built the jail? Okay, very simply, if I ask you the question, who built the jail? What will your answer be? Your answer will be the town. Am I right? The same way in the first sentence, if I ask you, who walked down the street? What your answer is going to be? Your answer is going to be, we walked down the street. Correct? So, whatever answer you are getting, that will become the subject of a sentence. And whatever action that subject has done, Okay, it becomes the predicate of your sentence. All right, we are telling about that subject. I hope we are clear with this. Okay, now in grammar, we have four different types of sentences. All right, these are very basic concepts, so you don't need to really worry about uh, 
these concepts as such okay now the first type of sentence is something called as an assertive or a declarative sentence ante enti let's let's take one moment and just think about why do we even need sentences all right sentences ante enti meaningful combination of words so i am using some meaningful combination of words to express some emotion some idea some information that i have right so let me just write it down either some information some idea or some emotion that i have i want to express correct or maybe i want to ask you regarding any of the info idea or emotion that you have inte kada man inke emaina cheyagalutama communication loni guys in the chat when you guys answered me when i asked you what is communication do you remember this is what came up in our discussion that either we share info we share ideas or we we like share some kind of an emotion right am i am i with you people so far are you guys with me yes okay all right fair enough now whenever i am giving you only an info okay whenever i am giving you only an info or an idea whenever i am giving you only an info or an idea then that is called as an assertive statement okay so i am basically making an assertion i'm just putting out a statement over there like what like new delhi is the capital of india okay so if i just ask or if i sorry if i just tell you that new delhi is the capital of india what is it i'm just sharing some information with you correct so that becomes an assertion so that becomes an assertive statement moving forward if i want to ask you anything okay if i want to ask you anything that is an interrogation so it becomes an interrogative sentence so any idea that you are communicating okay with respect to an question becomes an interrogative statement for example you want to know about the information regarding my health okay maybe you want to know the information regarding my health so when you use a sentence to ask me what will you ask me you will ask me how are you correct and maybe for that i will reply i am fine okay so this sentence that you are asking how are you this sentence becomes an interrogative sentence and the reply that i am giving i am fine becomes an assertive sentence are we clear so far so do you see how communication is happening on a day to day basis i'll give you a small insight you might be thinking we as an engineer i mean, I, i asked you know where where do you come across all of this what what do you do with all of this uh, there was a small person called as norm chomsky okay norm chomsky was one of the uh, linguists uh you guys know about artificial intelligence and all of this no deep learning machine learning artificial intelligence and all cognitive uh you know science and all are you guys aware of these topics yes no yes sir yeah now the development of artificial intelligence and cognitive neuroscience happened because of something called as an lad or a language acquisition device okay so you guys learning how to understand a language can help you immensely throughout your career as an engineer and i i know this because i am an engineer myself okay if you want to know what i have done i have finished my bachelor's in electronics okay and i have done my masters in psychology so this is where i i tell you about how all of this that you are studying now will be useful for you not only in an exam 
definitely it will be useful in an exam but not only in an exam okay let's say that you're working for facebook or maybe you're working for a company like tinder okay tinder facebook and all of these are now coming up with filters wherein when you are just typing an inappropriate message facebook sends a warning to you asking are you sure you want to send this how do you think facebook knows about it facebook knows about it because people like you and me are sitting behind the system and coding things like that for them okay i don't know how many of you are computer engineers but there are something called as regex expressions okay which are you know register expressions you can create your own register expressions which match this so that is where you can take your learning you don't need to just take what you're learning over here and think are this is very simple why should i keep listening to this okay look at what you're learning and try to you know go further beyond on that learning if you need any help my phone number is also right over here on the screen you can always contact me later after this class for you know any any of your uh, uh, doubts or help that you need but but my request from you all is please try to pay attention because what you are learning now shouldn't be just for the sake of clearing an exam okay at least that's not why i teach what i teach okay so the third third uh, type of sentence is imperative sentence okay now what are imperative sentences imperative sentences could be something like you know uh, switch on the light or maybe uh, go do your homework okay or maybe as simple as get out now remember you you guys told me yes no yeah and uh, when maybe you guys were a kid or something your teachers would have definitely made you play this game when whenever they are bored in the class they would have told you stand sit stand sit they must have made you do that right so all these things are sentences okay you stand sit it's a sentence you know why because when we are looking at this this is a command or an order am i right now when you have a command or an order you can skip the subject all right so over here please make a note you can sometimes skip the subject for imperative sentences for example when i say stand the actual meaning of it is you stand right when i say sit it's obviously you sit kada now think of it think about it you have a auditorium filled with people and you randomly walk into that auditorium and say stand who do you think will stand no one will stand no but if you say you stand and point at someone then definitely they'll stand but why did it work in your class it worked in your class because the teacher was directly pointing at you directly facing you now you get the logic of what imperative sentences are how do they work yes so they are commands or requests let's move further the last type of sentences are exclamatory sentences now what are exclamatory sentences exclamatory sentences are nothing but they are expressions okay they express a very strong feeling okay for example how cold the night is or how hot the day is how hard this test is okay any such things all right are we clear with this slide guys girls yes all of you okay all right guys uh, look whenever i'm asking you can just uh, type a small y if if that's you know comfortable if you're comfortable with that all right thank you so let's move forward now going to the first part of speech we have eight parts of speech let me just explain you quickly how and why we came up with this name parts of speech because i know how frustrating it is as a student when you don't get to know the reason behind what happened and why it happened i mean uh, if if someone tells you parts of speech is just a came up look whatever we are learning we should know the reason behind it okay ipudu manu maatladukuntunnam that is speech kada now for us to complete our speech and speech needs to be meaningful right so for our speech to be meaningful there are certain parts each part of that 
has a function. Imagine you are having a phone. Okay. In your mobile phone, what are the different parts of your mobile phone that you have? Right. You have maybe the charger. You have uh, maybe the screen. Right. You have the port. Have a small antenna inside it. You guys are all engineers, so I can actually tell you about the different parts. So you have a small antenna inside it. You have different parts to a phone, right? The same way, and and each of these parts has one function. Am I correct? Each of these parts has only one particular function. Yeah, the same way your speech has different parts, and those parts are these eight. Now, each of these parts has one function. Why use that part? Because of which others can understand what we. Are doing. Thing that we is a noun. Noun ante ante pair. Okay. They ni kai na manam pair iste dani manam noun anta. Whatever we see, if we are giving a name to it, it's called a noun. You are seeing me, you don't know my name. I'll tell you my name is Pradyumna Sharma. Then that becomes a noun. Okay. I don't know which college you are from. Okay. E do. Building lunnai or a playground lundo, naal playground lunnai or a fifty teachers sunna ranne aktels okay. If put darling name S R K R, ranne ne was Paristan. That is a noun, right? The same way at six o'clock if I wake up and if I don't eat anything until twelve o'clock, that's it. In his stomach, a lot of uh, you know uh, some kind of disturbance starts. i don't know what is called i will give that thing or that disturbance a name called as hunger akali okay so like that if i am giving a name to anything all right that becomes a noun now your nouns are divided into three different parts nana okay it's based on use based on gender and based on the case all right so let me quickly explain each one of them to you based on the use that means based on the functionality of the name a name deni kistunna manna dani batti maniki aaru classifications unnai okay on the basis of what and why we are using that name for a particular thing we have six classifications first thing if we are giving a name to something unique అది మనిషి అయినా కావచ్చు వస్తువు అయినా కావచ్చు ప్లేస్ అయినా కావచ్చు ఇఫ్ సంథింగ్ ఇస్ యునిక్ ఓకే దెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ యాజ్ అ ప్రాపర్ నౌన్ ఆల్ రైట్ ఇఫ్ పీపుల్ ఇఫ్ యు ఆర్ మేకింగ్ నోట్స్ యు డోంట్ నీడ్ టు యు నో కాపీ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద స్లైడ్ యు కెన్ జస్ట్ కాపీ వాట్ ఐమ్ రైటింగ్ డౌన్ ఆర్ వాట్ ఐమ్ అండర్లైనింగ్ దోస్ ఆర్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ పార్ట్స్ ఓకే ఆల్ రైట్ so if if we look at what proper nouns are examples of proper nouns one example can be india okay because india is unique there's only one country called india no if i have four countries called india it will become very sad okay the same way the name kushal might also be unique all right although i might have four to five different kushals in the same classroom each kushal is his own so that name is unique to that person okay same way the city visakhapatnam all right now if i want to give a name because there are some common characteristics or some common attributes to some things like let us say all objects which has four legs and a seat i'll call as a chair okay so any object that has four legs and a seat can be called as a chair and nan nan ankonde any objects ki a a vishayam edaithe common ga undo vaatanniki meer chair an peristaru kada 
So that becomes a common noun. Guys, are you able to understand me? Am I going fast? No, right? You guys are able to understand properly, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now think of it this way: If I take a few common nouns, let us say that uh, you are studying. Everyone in this classroom, maybe how many participants do I have? I have like five hundred, four hundred ninety-one participants. Okay, and each of you is studying. Am I right? So, because each of you is studying, if I give you a name, student. All right, and if I say students, can you respond? All of you would respond, right? All of you are students, right? So that becomes a common name. But now, now, I have four hundred and ninety-one of you, and maybe another teacher in another class has maybe another five hundred of you. All right. So these four ninety-one students not only have that they are studying in common, but these four ninety-one students belong to one group. Okay. now what can this group be called maybe i can call this group as batch 2 okay so now if i say students of batch 2 please respond only you will respond other students won't respond right so this student whatever we have is a common noun whereas this batch 2 becomes a collective noun for example i have 10 soldiers who are a part of my regiment okay so now this 10 soldiers become a common noun and this regiment becomes a collective noun clear the same way abstract nouns as i explained you about hunger are things that you can feel but you cannot really see okay what are countable and uncountable nouns countable and uncountable nouns are nouns or the names that are given to objects that you can count for example crows okay crow is a countable noun whereas when i'm having milk i can count packets of milk but i cannot count milk itself right i can say give me three packets but can i say give me three milk i cannot say give me three milk no that will be very absurd right so that's the difference between countable and uncountable nouns now based on case we have again three things okay the first thing is a subjective case what do i mean by subjective case look at this sentence when i have the sentence john threw a stone first of all let us see what are the names in this particular sentence john is a name stone is a name correct john is a name and stone is a name now if i am looking at this name john in this sentence john threw a stone can i say that this sentence is talking about john and telling what john did am i right this sentence yes, talking about john and is telling me what john did so from my knowledge i can tell that john or whomever we are talking about becomes the subject of the sentence and and whatever we are talking about them becomes the predicate of that sentence correct so because this noun john is in subject is like a subject we say that john is in the subjective case all right now please 
try to understand this small logic about what is an object okay so when a subject does something or does an action the influence okay or the consequence of that action can be seen on the object all right for example john threw a stone now because of that what happened something will happen to the stone nothing will happen to john right yeah so because of john doing something there is an influence on some object now this object is called as or this word is called as an object because our noun is in the object it looks like an object we call this noun to be in the objective case okay similarly if i look at a person thing okay instead of saying john threw a stone if i say john's stone okay is thrown at a tree then th i'm not talking about john in this sentence i'm talking about john's stone am i right so if i say john's stone then this b looks like something belongs to john am i right so whenever there is a component of something belongs to someone it's called as possessive case okay are we clear yeah so there are many ways in which you can come up with a possessive case once i give you the <coughs> ppt you can go through this and ask me if you have a doubt it's very simple you've been doing this for a, a lot of uh, time for now okay all right so guys the time right now is 254 without taking a lot of time i mean maybe we can take like you know uh, one two minutes please come up with the answers for these four questions come on fast can you see my screen Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So what you can do is you can first note down all the answers on your chat box. Do not press enter. All right. I don't want others to know what the answer is. So whatever you think is the answer, wow, my dear friend, two F three. Kanga rekwe niku. Okay. And Michelle, wait. Chia chia chia. Nand kar instructions sir. okay so do not press enter all right once the time elapses i'll ask you for the answers then all of you can press enter so write down one this option two this option three this option four this option keep it in your chat once i ask you to send it you can send it to me immediately okay all right start So those of you who are sending me the answers, you did not listen to my instructions, no. But okay, all right. So let's let's actually uh, you know go forward with it because you guys are typing the answers anyways. 
So Jenna and Morris walked dash four dogs every day. Now see these two are nouns, right? So what is the possessive noun amongst these? The possessive noun is they. Okay, they are and they. This is a contraction. Please remember, there's a difference. Okay, so this is called as a contraction, and option C is known as the possessive form. Okay, yeah. What about <clears throat> the second answer? The dogs. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's go to the fifth question. All right. The dog preferred dash black leash. Can you guys give me an answer for that? Yes, it's going to be B. Okay. Now, again, as I told you, the differences between contraction and yeah, the differences between contraction and proposition. When you have something like this, it means it is. Okay. This is belonging to. it this is an obvious mistake all right okay let's go forward next thing that we are going to look at is a pronoun okay we're going to basically see what is a pronoun now we've seen what nouns are and if i have a lot of nouns or maybe if i have to use the same noun again and again it causes something we call as redundancy why is redundancy bad redundancy is bad because it causes boredom it causes disinterest okay so what we do also it it takes away something from the comprehension when you're not interested in reading the thing you won't be able to understand the thing properly right so what we do is we replace a uh, nouns with pronouns okay for example <clears throat> i you we all these are pronouns okay so if i take this sentence mary is tired now i am assuming that this word mary is the name given to a female person okay so i am going to use the pronoun she okay what about i can you tell me which gender will i belong to it depends on who you are correct it could either be male or female okay and again now look at this i want her so this her is who her again becomes mary how would it look otherwise it would have looked very different okay mary. mary is tired mary wants to sleep let's say <clears throat> i am in this situation so pradyumna wants mary to dance with pradyumna correct just give me one moment guys right all right guys sorry can you see me now yeah so this is how pronouns work let's go forward daddy
Yeah, guys, I'm sorry. All right, so let's move forward. Let's look at the third uh, type of uh, parts of speech that we are looking at, it is adjective. Okay. Now, what are adjectives? Adjectives basically describe a noun. Now, when I'm saying describing a noun, it means telling in anything about it. Okay? Describing means telling anything about that noun. All right? For example, we can see a big, small, let's take one example with this. I have a big bike. Okay? I have three potatoes. If I say either of these things, now can I say that in this entire sentence, I is a noun and bike is a noun, correct? So the blue boxes are nouns here, yes? Now this word big is telling me something about my bike. So it's telling me something about a noun so that becomes an adjective <clears throat> okay the same way i have three potatoes in this sentence i is a noun and potato is a noun correct so when i'm saying i have three potatoes definitely this three is telling you something about potatoes basically how many potatoes there are correct so this three also becomes an adjective Let's take one more example. If I'm saying I am a boy, right? Now, in this sentence, I know that I is a noun. Boy is a noun. Definitely, I is a noun. Boy is a noun. How many boys am I? If I ask you how many boys am I? The answer is one boy. And that you're getting to know because of the word A. <clears throat> Correct? So A also becomes an adjective. All right? So, so A and the, these three things, which are known as articles, are also special type of adjectives. Are we clear? Guys, are we all clear? Yes, sir. Yeah? Okay. Let's move forward. Let's look at what verbs are. All right? So basically, verbs denote a state of action or an action itself. Yeah? That means I can either say that I am running, I am dancing. Okay? or like I study, or maybe I can say that I am calm. Okay, when I say I am calm, this is a state of action. Okay, I could also say I was calm, right? But this sentence, sentence one, is different from sentence two. Why? because it's different state of action. All right, let's move forward. Next thing is an adverb. What is an adverb? Just like I told you about an adjective. Okay, let's look at what an adverb does. But for this, I'll have to take a little bit more of an example while I'm teaching you, okay? So look at this first example. Okay, in this example, I eat my lunch quickly, correct? Let us see what are the nouns. Whenever a sentence has been presented to you, first things first, find out the nouns. I is a noun, okay? Now, obviously, lunch is also a noun. You are only giving the name, no? Lunch karke. 
So I is a noun and lunch is a noun. Now, what is a verb? So I'm just putting it here. Blue boxes are all nouns. I'm putting all the verbs with green boxes. Okay. So what is the action that's being done? Eating. Correct. Now look at this word quickly. About which word does this word quickly tell us? This word quickly tells us about the word eat. Yala tint now, tandarga tint now. Am I right? So obviously, this word <coughs> quickly is an adverb. Okay? Now, why is it an adverb or how is it an adverb? It is an adverb to a verb. Let's take another example. Let me take the same sentence. Okay, just one moment, guys. Okay, yes. So let me take the same example. I eat my lunch. And I'm just adding one word. Okay, let me just add that uh, word in another ink maybe very okay quickly now according to the previous sentence that we have done we already know this is a noun this is a noun yes now this is a pronoun okay all right and what is a verb eat is the verb Okay, now look at this. When I say quickly, obviously this quickly is telling me about eating. Correct? But if I ask you how quickly can you eat, you will tell me very quickly. Correct? So this very is telling me how or it's telling me something about my adverb, right? So we can have a adverb to an adverb as well. So we've seen two things. We've seen an adverb to a verb. We've seen an adverb to an adverb. Let me also show you what's an adverb to a adjective. Okay. Now let's take this example. Ram is an extremely good boy. Okay. So let's already again, let's do the same thing that we've done before. Ram is a noun. Boy is a noun. Correct. Now, what are, what are our verbs? After we've identified nouns, let's try to identify verbs. Over here, there is no word that shows action. But there is one word that shows state of action. Okay, and which word is that? That word is is. Okay. So basically, I have my noun says Ram and boy, and I have my verb as is. Okay. So what happens to these words an and good? Okay. See, over here, good is telling me about boy, and is also telling me about boy. How? We have boy. Number of boys is being told by Anne. What type of boy is told by good? Okay. So number of boys is being told by Anne. That means only one boy. And what type of boy is being told by good? Okay, now I have absolutely no idea who Dawal Kulkarni is, but okay, thank you. Uh, I, I'm going to take that as a compliment, but all right. So now, yeah, as I was saying, when I'm looking at this word extremely, okay, this word is telling me how good I am. Okay, Alright? So this word 
extremely okay becomes an adjective ka adverb an adverb to an adjective okay and which adjective is it telling me about it's telling me about the adjective good are we clear guys girls yes okay yes sir all right okay oh dawal cool karni is a cricketer no i'm sorry i didn't know that all right so yeah let's go with another test okay see so in this test i need you to uh, identify the highlighted word for me ma 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 right so any six uh please uh, be mindful that you are unmuted when you are speaking okay so anyways the time is 312 alright i'll give you like a couple of minutes to solve these eight questions again the the rules are simple you know the answer put it on the chat wait for me to ask you for it and then send it okay all right you guys can start All right, so we're done. Should I start? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So the first sentence, what does it say? It says that it was a good catch, right? Now, what is this uh, word catch? Edo ayin. So something happened, and to that thing we are giving a name, right? ఇలా పట్టుకున్నాడు దానికి ఏమో మనం ఏదో పేరు ఇచ్చాం క్యాచ్ అని యా సో బికాస్ దిస్ ఇస్ అ నేమ్ ఓకే యాక్చువల్లీ యూ నో వాట్ లెట్ మీ జస్ట్ యూస్ ద బ్లూ బికాస్ వి మెయింటైన్ ద కలర్ కోడ్ నో సో సిన్స్ దిస్ ఇస్ అ నేమ్ ఐ కెన్ కాల్ దిస్ యాజ్ అ నౌ వెరీ సింపుల్ ఓకే నో నో రిమెంబర్ ఈజ్ ఇట్ నాట్ అన్ యాక్షన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అన్ యాక్షన్ కరెక్ట్ ఏ నేను కాదనట్లేదు బట్ here we are not talking about what action is happening we are talking about the name we are giving to that action okay there's a difference for example look at your second question cats catch mice now when i am telling you cats catch mice over there also the name of that action is only catching but here that high that word or that action is only highlighted in the previous one the word that we highlighted we are only giving a name to that action okay so this part in the second sentence this catch will be a what verb <clears throat> what about third my friend has a gold watch okay obviously my friend is a noun okay watch is a noun why is my friend a noun because ad evado unnadu akkada some fellow is there who is he he is my friend 
so that phrase becomes a noun phrase okay i i'll tell you about what noun phrase sir in the phrases class all right okay 3k7 chepu okay fine thank you thank you for muting yourself i thought you had it out but it's okay all right so now that we know watch is a uh, what do i say uh, noun this part gold tells me what type of a watch it is okay so gold becomes an adjective yes similarly if we look carefully here gold is a noun because i am giving it a name correct so can i quickly go with the rest for yeah most is noun no, sir the fourth one is noun yeah fourth one is noun nana blue pattern kada fourth one is noun okay yeah. third one sir sorry adjective sir yeah vijay ratna doubt ain't nana ratna vijaya but i i don't know how to i mean which is your name but he is not responding sir oh okay all right no problem so when i'm saying most people think so people and the noun kada so entha mandi people and naaku cheptondi kada so some most edena avach kada so this becomes an adjective okay is that clear same way what most annoys me is this stubbornness annapudu what most annoys see over here this annoys is a verb okay most annoys ante verb gurinchi edo cheptunnam we are telling something about the verb so this is our adverb so here most is our adverb are we clear andar ki ardham avutunda are you guys able to understand this yes yeah okay all right next one should learn to fight against the evil forces ikkad forces ante enti peer so it will be a noun dushta shaktulu antnam shaktulu an man peer icham kada so it's a noun adhe in the bottom one i was forced to resign annapudu a forced annadi enti verb okay are we clear with all of this all right here yeah. okay good so let's go forward now i am leaving out prepositions and conjunctions from this ppt because we are going to deal with it in another ppt very very uh, deeply okay so i'm going to go to interjections here in interjection what is an interjection ante an interjection is nothing but a word which expresses a mood or reaction okay an interjection is a word which expresses a mood or reaction all right okay now see for example we have this word wow yeah so in this entire sentence wow i passed the english exam wow is expressing my emotion okay i passed the english exam annadi idea or information kannana yeah kani wow annadu em chestunna wow annadu naaku idea ivvadledu information ivvadledu em chestundi its only and only work is to deal with expression of my emotion okay so these words are known as interjections okay all right come on let's start doing this yeah now i will do this along with you or should i like give you a little bit of time for you to solve these four yeah i'll give you a little bit of time we'll do like how we've been doing yes okay take 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 a minute nalgu ba easy ne 
తొందరగా చేసేయండి విల్ గెట్ బ్యాక్ విత్ ఈచ్ అదర్ యా right so do you guys figure out what it is should we start discussing yes okay fine now the first one is you should paint the house without outside help kada ipudu ee help annad edaithe undo that is some some name that i have given okay na so outside help ante i am telling you what type of help correct so it is going to become an adjective so your answer should be b what about second answer it says let's sit outside and work out a way to do it yes okay now can i say that this part sit is a verb and this word outside is telling me where to sit so it's telling me something about the verb correct so that becomes an adverb all right just so you guys you guys know the legends are blue is for a noun green is for a verb yellow is for an adjective sir it is for an adverb బయట వాళ్ళ సహాయం లేకుండా యూ షుడ్ పెయింట్ హౌస్ అని కదా బయట వాళ్ళు అనేసరికి నౌన్ కింద వస్తుంది కదా అవుట్సైడ్ అంటే ఏంటంటే యూ షుడ్ పెయింట్ హౌస్ వితౌట్ అవుట్సైడ్ హెల్ప్ అంటే బయట వాళ్ళ సహాయం లేకుండా నువ్వు పెయింట్ చేయడం అనేది సార్ సహాయం కదా సార్ పేరే పేరేమని పిలవాలి నిన్ను త్రీ కే టూ అనడానికి బాగోలేదు సూర్య సార్ సూర్య ఓకే సూర్య సహాయం అన్నది ఏమో నవనే కదా అక్కడ దాకా క్లియర్ అవునా సో ఇప్పుడు ఎవరి సహాయం తీసుకుంటున్నావు నువ్వు అవుట్ సార్ బట్ అవుట్ సార్ అనేది నవన్ కదా సార్ ఎలాగా నువ్వు చూడు ఇప్పుడు సహాయం అన్నది నవనేనా సహాయం నవన్ సహాయం నవన్ సహాయం నవన్ అయినప్పుడు దాని గురించి నేను ఏది చెప్పినా అది యాడ్జెక్టివ్ అయిపోవాలి కదా బయట సహాయమా ఇంట్లో సహాయమా ఎక్కువ సహాయమా తక్కువ సహాయమా సమ్ హెల్ప్ మోర్ హెల్ప్ లిటిల్ హెల్ప్ అన్నప్పుడు సమ్ము మోరు లిటిల్ ఏమో చాడ్జెక్టివ్ అయినా మరి అది తీసేసి నేను ఆ ప్లేస్ లోనే అవుట్ సైడ్ పెట్టినప్పుడు అది కూడా యాడ్జెక్టివ్ అవ్వాలి కదా అర్థమైందా లాజిక్ సో గైస్ కన్ఫ్యూజ్ లైక్ దాట్ ఆల్సో టేక్ టేక్ అనదర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ విత్ ద సేమ్ వర్డింగ్స్ రిమూవ్ దిస్ వర్డ్ అండ్ సి వాట్ వాట్ ఈస్ హ్యాపనింగ్ that way also you get to know sometimes okay surya doubt clear kada yes sir yeah okay rishi you were going to say something are you planning to ask me something or should i continue okay all right rishi sir help cheyadam anedi verb avutadu kada sir enna హెల్ప్ చేయడం హెల్ప్ అనేది వర్బ్ అవుతుంది కదా సార్ లేదు లేదు హెల్ప్ ఒక వర్డ్ ప్రతి కాంటెక్స్ట్ లోని అదే అవ్వాలని లేదు ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఐ హెల్ప్డ్ హిమ్ అన్నప్పుడు హెల్ప్ వర్డ్ వర్బ్ అవుతుంది ఓకేనా 
Nana, uh, how do what do I call you? Should I call you Leela or Satyavati? How do I call you? Leela, sir. Leela, okay. So Leela, if I say I took chocolate, chocolate now ne kada? Yes, sir. Alage I took help and now help or now ne out ne kada? Oh, okay, sir. So I took 50, uh, uh, lapta, I took outside chocolate. Then buy chocolate, thin nano. Okay? So I took outside chocolate. Same way, I took outside help. Okay. Oh, now, no? Outside, ente, adjective, I penna? Adjective, yes. Yeah? Okay. So where were we? Third question. Third question will be uh, the car is parked outside the garden. Okay, so ikada garden ki car ekkadundo dani ki relation chapter on the kanaka e word manam preposition and term. Okay, na? Next, the, the politician repented his past mistakes. If you put children, sorry, adjective out. Oh, adjective out. Correct. Enduku mistakes under the Noun kanaka yes. adjective. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. So these four quickly come on. Turn right past the house with a huge banyan tree. Ante anti. Huh? Adverb. Ah, card. Adjective. Card. Preposition. Definitely ga noun aithe card. So it's only preposition. Kita mingling the option. All right. See, I'll tell you the logic behind it. See, when I'm saying turn right past the house, you guys are thinking turn right past the house. Correct. Ante anti a illu data gaane. Okay, ante banyan tree unna illu. So there is there is a house something like this. Okay na, chud ma chinnna prillagi illu gida neerpin chere ekku raadu ma ko. Okay na, din pa mochi mariche tunna na mata. So mariche tik pada tarlonte. Yeah. So this is a compound. Ikkada street tunna di ilaga. All right. So you are sorry. You are walking and you have to. Turn right. Here right. So, if you cross the line, you right. All right? Now, this word, past, cross the line, that the line, anadam, manaki, e inti ki, miru chestana paniki, relation ne chupistan de kada, anduku manam dani, preposition kinda tis koali. Okay? Yes, sir. All right, got it. Yeah. So next, uh, did you watch that movie before? Adorably. Adjective. Noun. Watch is the verb. Movie is also noun. Adverbs. Ah, uh, obvious. Adverbs. In the kante, eppur choose one and one one chapter on the. So it's going to be adverb. Next. He went right through the glass wall, which he couldn't make out. Ante anti through anna pura malla ikarchodendi glass wall ki tanaki glass wall ki tanaki majjana unna relationship hi through chupistondi kada so andu ko idi preposition hi potundi na na conjunction kado it's not going to be a conjunction. It's going to be a preposition. Okay. Now, last one is girl started. Conjunction. Sorry. Conjunction. Conjunction, sir. Conjunction. Okay. In the quante, this whole part is one action. And then this whole part is your second action. This word after is joining both these actions. Okay. All right. Uh, the class is not over. You guys just need to wait. I have to take off. Uh, I have to just load another PPT.
all right right so as i told you we are going to learn prepositions and conjunctions in detail okay the time currently is 3:30 yeah so in another half an hour we will end this class it's fine okay so basically what is a preposition now a preposition is a word that is supposed to establish a relationship okay it's supposed to give you a relationship it's supposed to tell you some kind of relationship between a noun and another word or an element <clears throat> okay is it complicated to understand don't worry let me tell you pradi is sitting on a chair all right now if i say pradi is sitting on a chair who is the noun in this entire situation obviously pradi is the noun in this entire situation correct so this is my noun what is he doing or is there any other noun obviously yes there is another noun chair so this is also a noun what's he doing he is sitting so is sitting becomes a verb on how many chairs is he sitting any chair mein kuchunnadadu okka chair mein kuchunnadadu kada buddhunnadu avadaina ok chair mein kuchuntadu kada yeah so a is telling me how many chairs so a becomes an adjective correct yeah now look this is all fine we are left with this one single word on okay so right now i have a chair maybe i can say like this is a chair okay and uh, yeah fine now this is this is becoming a good chair all right now let us say that pradi is over here and he is sitting like this on this chair all right this person is my noun and this is some element and i am trying to tell you a relationship between this person and this element that this person is on this element Are you getting it so any such word becomes a preposition are we clear yeah so look at this the man on the platform so the nouns are man and platform preposition is on the same way okay if i have this one she arrived after dinner she is a noun dinner is an element and after is becoming my preposition the tree near the gate so tree and gate are elements where tree is my noun obviously if i am speaking about the tree and near is becoming my preposition all right okay now there are some things called as a preposition of place okay what are prepositions of place in at and on all right so we use on with surfaces for example it's on the table yeah we use it with places okay i stayed on movie i i stay on the fourth floor right and we use on with directions okay so please just note down what i'm underlining that's more than enough okay instead of small islands you can say so instead of islands maybe you can what is happening uh you can all see my screen still no yes sir okay all right okay so instead of small islands maybe you can say places okay so you can use it with surfaces you can use it with places and you can use it with directions okay like it's on the left to me it's on the right to me like that 
okay now where do we use at obviously again we use at also with places what type of places locations okay so at the bus stop at the cinema all right or we use specific locations so at is used for locations which are usually specific all right why am i not able to move okay all right now you can also use at when you are in groups of people for example where are you now where are all of you now we are at the concert we are at the party okay we are at the back of the class you can use all this what about in in is also used with spaces okay like i am in a room i am in a park okay you don't say i am at a park you say i am at the park okay or you say i am in a park what's the difference when you're saying i am at the park the becomes the article okay all right now we can use in with bodies of water like i am in the river i am in the sea i am in the bathtub okay you can use in with lines like i am in a queue or i am in a row all right so yeah come on quickly please uh, solve these up answer these questions yeah i don't think it should take a lot of time it's very simple all right can you guys start come on all right so let's look at the uh, questions the label is dash the bottle now see all the three options will make sense except for the b part okay a and c both make sense but just common sense point is why if if a label is inside the bottle i won't be able to see it correct so the not only what is you know logically you should also think about how does it work out okay grammatically it's fine and how does it work out logically so the first answer is c what about second jack is waiting at the bottom of the stairs on the bottom of the stairs or in the bottom of the stairs what's it going to be right it's going to be at the bottom of the stairs okay our seats are dash the third row our seats are in mm. the third row correct next turn left on the lights at the lights in the lights and the ha huh? sorry leela what are you saying on the lights obviously it's going to be at the lights no and no it's not going to be in it's not going to be in it's going to be at only 
అంటే లైట్స్ దగ్గర అని ఓకే ఇన్ అంటే లైట్స్ లోని అని ఆన్ అంటే లైట్స్ పైన అని ఓకేనా సో లైట్స్ వచ్చినప్పుడు కదా సో యాట్ ది లైట్స్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఆల్ రైట్ నా వాట్ అబౌట్ దిస్ హీస్ సిటింగ్ డాష్ నెక్స్ట్ టు ది పియానో ఇల్ బీ హీస్ సిటింగ్ ఆన్ ద చైర్ పియానో ఓకే ఆల్ రైట్ now look at this when we are using in all right we can use in with static verbs what are static verbs static verbs are actions that are going to be like that only they are static actions they are not actions that are happening all right for example i stay in usa me staying is a continuous action okay so it's a static action it's not like it's going on happening it's just happened okay so with such things we use in all right what about at we use at also with static actions like i am at the cinema okay what about to now when we are using to we are using to with something called as a verbs of movement all right for example i have to go to cinema i have to dance tomorrow right am i clear so with all these type of things we are going to use to all right okay. now there's one important note whenever we are using verbs of movement okay and the noun home we we'll use it in this way he went home they drove home all right we are not going to be using any preposition over here all right that means we won't say he went to home do you get what i'm trying to say we won't say we went to home he will say he went home all right okay yeah can can you guys start with this i don't think this should take a lot of time in patta patta man chese achi tanda tanda ga aslo come on start right okay so let's start he lives dash new york obviously in, in new york right she went dash to went to home obviously nothing right we'll not use to home she won't go to home it is nothing so she went home next i work in delhi so i uh, i gave off the answer so it's going to be in delhi yeah next he went dash his friends to his to his to that was very good very good the why nothing sir second why nothing second second question sir okay when ikkadimo uh, chee rule chusnam kada na ippude ఇక్కడ టూ దగ్గర నేను ఇక్కడ రాసినట్టు ఉన్నాను ఇక్కడ ఒక్క నిమిషం ఆగు ఇక్కడ ప్రపోజిషన్స్ రావని ఇంపార్టెంట్ నోట్ కూడా చెప్పినాను నీకు వెన్ ఐమ్ హ్యావింగ్ హీ వెంట్ టు హోమ్ ఇట్ డస్ నాట్ మేక్ సెన్స్ ఎందుకు హీ అన్నది హోమ్ అన్న దానికి నేను రిలేషన్ ఏం చూపించడం లేదు టూ తోటి 
do you understand when when do i use a preposition when i'm showing a relation between two objects kada ikkad nenu em relation chupinchatam ledhu kada uh someone who asked me that doubt is it clear now ha i assume nothing will, will be she went nothing from side i thought that no 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 no, no. i meant she went home there is no addition over here in that, okay sir that's it yeah okay that's all i thought okay good good no problem so what will what will be the last answer she arrived at the cinema for movie premiere am i right yes sir okay all right now these are prepositions of time what are these for while and during okay all right so let's quickly look at what happens now for is used for how long anamata ఎప్పుడైనా అలా గుర్చు గుర్తుంచుకోండి సంథింగ్ దట్ హాస్ హ్యాపెన్ ఓన్లీ ఆల్ రైట్ దట్ మీన్స్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఫర్ మెనీ ఇయర్స్ ఐ బీన్ టీచింగ్ అలాగా వేర్ హాస్ వెన్ వీఆర్ యూజింగ్ వైల్ ఇట్ ఈస్ యూజ్ ఓన్లీ ఫర్ అ పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ టైమ్ ఓకే సో ఫర్ ఈస్ యూజ్ ఫర్ అ పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ టైమ్ వేర్ హాస్ వైల్ ఈస్ యూజ్ ఓన్లీ ఫర్ అ పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ టైమ్ అంటే ఏంటి దిస్ ఈస్ అ షార్ట్ డ్యూరేషన్ this is some duration and matter okay are we clear yes sir no people can you hear me yes sir yes sir yes sir fine next what about during during ante when something happens okay see you guys can just simply note down these small small things and they'll help you a lot all right when you're doing your reading comprehensions and all also this will help you a lot okay yeah right. so as i was saying some examples are during class during my vacation etc so during is used for when something happens yeah so let's start this now the clue is just think can i think about it in terms of how long it's been happening for or when it happened depending on that use your options okay come on tell me what are the answers for huh for first answer for yes obviously first answer is for he has been working for 3 years why because this is how long some period of time correct all right uh what about i fell asleep during 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 correct okay did you see shelly for your vacation while your vacation during your vacation during during your while during your vacation while during during no options during your no during sir. is during it's during sir. yeah i i know ma that's what i'm also telling one f4 nenu adhe cheptunnanu okay it will be during all right what about uh, this fourth one for 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 an hour for 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 a for talk for an hour oh no correct very good very good what about fifth one while 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 very good very good nice while so let's go to the next one prepositions of time and date when we are looking at time and date also we have in at and on but the difference is a uh, this much see when we are looking at in over here yo one minute yeah okay so when we are looking at in over here we are looking in specific periods okay like in this month in this specific year or in this specific period of time okay so the important part is period all right whereas when you are whereas when you are looking at you are looking at precise time okay so when you are looking at at you are looking at precise time what about on so wait in is period at is precise time 
what about on on particular things like maybe days of the week okay or specific days of the calendar for those things you can use on okay so on is for specific details all right now there are few places where you might go wrong and these are the parts we use in the morning afternoon in the evening but night we don't say i will do it in the night okay we say at the night okay please be very very careful with this all right yes can we quickly go on with this yeah let's meet yet 6 o'clock in on july in on in not on if july. on july it will be very wrong it will be in july or on july 4th like that i have to say okay next i went there in, in 1978 1978 she'll be back at on on, 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 on. very and we met on on sir on 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 right okay now let's quickly look at what conjunctions are okay conjunctions are of two types we have coordinating conjunctions and correlated conjunctions okay now remember for coordinating conjunctions you can simply remember this acronym fan boys okay fan boy stands for for and nor but or yet so okay am i clear yes sir all right now in this but and yet they both will look very similar to you people but remember but te daite undo this talks about a tone of finality okay ante enti khachitanga cheppagalanu okay na like i uh, i i love a burger but i don't have money okay yet edaithe undo it is open to change okay i am a vegetarian yet i eat chicken sometimes okay do you get my point yes sir yeah so that's the only uh, thing that i want you to note down okay are we clear so let's move forward to the exercise because all this is the theory that you have already studied <coughs> here <coughs> so please come on join these uh, sentences using the you know different coordinating conjunctions hari does not write fast dash he writes very well now can you see that part is a negative thing and second part is a positive thing yeah but but sir very good so when you have one positive one sir. use but both positive or both negative you will use and okay so when you have one positive one negative you will use but all right so what about the second one the old man and, steps and and and, and, sir. and sir very good third one he tried to get up but but sir but 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 sir but he was afraid of being late so so he ran so so he ran very good so sir so he ran good i have a cricket bat and and under under and i and have sir. a set of stumps 
terms. Nice. What about these? We went early to the circle. But 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 but, but sir. But uh, now now see now see. Over here, you cannot use but because it is not a yes, tonality. Very good. This yes. is going to be okay. See, when you say we went early to the circus, but we could not get a seat. That is like before going to circus, you know you won't get a seat for sure. Okay, you went early to the circus, hoping you might get a seat. So that position is open to change. No, you're getting my. Yeah, okay. He must do as he is told, or he will be. Yeah. Okay. Na fell down on his knees and and begged for me. And he begged for me. I will come. For I am not. That means I will come because I am not ill. Okay. Whenever I am using it like this over here, when I am using this for, it means because I will come. I am not ill. That means I will come because I am not ill. Rama may be in the house or Rama may be in the garden. Correct. Be clear. So ninth one of it. It na na ninth ta. I will come. Ninth one sir. Tenth ta. Ninth one sir. Ninth one sir. Bali chapati. Ipudu idhe kada. Meri idhe ka chapti naaru. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I am. I will come for I am not ill and day. I will come because I am not ill and not me run ko ali. ना फ्रंट कर्धम अर्थमेंड With correlative conjunctions, what are correlative conjunctions? Correlative conjunctions are the conjunctions which do not go individually. Okay, they always go in pairs, like not only but also, either or, neither nor, avanin. Okay, na? Yes. So let's just solve a small example with, uh, I mean, maybe a small exercise with this, and then we'll call this a day. All right, because it's almost four o'clock. Yeah. So can we solve? I would like both and uh, both and both the cake and the cookies for dessert. So both and dessert. all right. Uh, can you do the fourth one for me? Could you ask either Mrs. Jones? Or, or Mr. Jones, Mr. Lewis. Yeah, sorry. Either Mrs. Jones or Mr. Lewis. Correct. Yes, sir. Here we'll get C option, A option. The young boy would eat dash the soup, dash the vegetables for lunch. Neither the soup. 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 Neither We can, boy would eat either the soup or the vegetables for lunch, or we could say the young boy would eat neither the soup nor the vegetables for lunch. Okay. Well, English. Inna na. Right. All right. Next, the fifth one. There was dash and a thunderstorm. Oh, sorry. There was. Sir. A... Second then, ki ye kuda ravachka sir. Chala na na. बटू I would like either the cake or the cookies for dessert. Another use case, coach. Okay. Yeah. 
అలానే Right, over here also the same logic. We can't use B, le. yeah, C or A we can use. Yes, sir. Yeah, same, same logic, true. Okay? Should we go to the fifth one? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. What will the answer? There was? Touch and look. Touch. Ah, there was? Touch and understand. That we could not go on to the field trip. So, D is the answer. All right. Next, should we do this forward fast? Come on. I would dash take an hour to walk three miles, dash run them. Rather take an hour. Rather than. Rather than. Rather than. Rather than. Very, Rather. very good. Next, seventh one. Come on, seventh one. When we go to the beach, let's pack. Both, both the beach both umbrella and umbrella the tent. Umbrella and the tent. Uh, yeah, both the beach umbrella and the tent. Next one. Both the president and the congress. correct neither nor neither nor can also be neither or can be either or cannot be so for this you can have a or b okay both aithe iddarki nachindi lekapothe vaallu iddarlo evarki nachaledu kani evaro okala nachadam maatram avadu last ninth one also a and b both నైన్ <laughs> one minute just just give me one moment is it clear all is happening okay fine now wait in this sentence look at what is happening will bring the bag so there's only one bag of gear okay if they take off this the bag okay and they say will bring a bag of then it can be either or also So, uh, sorry then it can be both and also okay but when they are saying the bag there is only one bag and it's very specific that means either this person or this person will bring this one bag ardhaina epran confusion lo unte context choose kondi context choose kokunda meer answers better kodu sir third uh, you mean eighth question is that what you are asking me zero no two. sir in previous <laughs> slide third question you skip slide question ah uh, dash you clean your room dash you do not go or uh, do not get to go outside either or either you clean your room or you do not go get to go outside uh, uh, who who asked me this question 262 no 262 uh, your parents never threatened you for anything they never told you either you get 90 marks or you are going to sit in your room for the rest of your life they never told you that uh, this is pretty much the same okay yeah so either you clean your room or you don't get to go outside all right are we, are we clear sir okay. okay with this i think we'll we'll uh, put an end to this class okay i'll stop the class over here yeah uh my name is pradyumna sharma this is my name only okay it's it's not someone else and uh, 
yeah if if you have any doubts please do reach out to me on this mobile number or you can even mail me at this email id which is pradi sharma at the rate gmail.com okay please please do practice grammar grammar is extremely important and if if not for only a placement exam think of it as a means to understand any language okay once you understand the grammar of one particular language you irrevocably get some expertise in understanding the grammar of all languages okay all right so 3 g3 yeah thank you thank you so much for that comment uh, guys if you have any feedback negative or positive you you can always put it on to this chat if you don't want to put it on to the chat of everyone you can send it to me privately else you can even text me personally if there's something you want me to change because we are going to be interacting with each other for a considerable amount of time okay so you have to see my face and uh, i'll obviously want to you know look at you and you know listen to all of you so if there's anything at any point of time that you want me to you know correct teach better teach differently do always let me know there's no problem okay this is the fourth year that i'm teaching uh, and this is the second year that i'm coming to srkr i think second or third year that i'm coming to srkr so yeah i'm very happy to be with all of you i'll meet you again tomorrow okay have a very good day take thank care. you sir okay bye bye have a good day yaar bye sir bye సార్ పీబీటీ పెడతారా సార్ మీరు